Kingdom. Hey there, this is Lancius with Lancius Gaming with Level Up Kingdom. So today we're doing level one for Uncharted Waters New Horizons. For those of you who have never played the game series, it takes place back in the Age of Exploration. The uh, Americas have simply, simply just been discovered. And you pick one of six different characters to go on out on an adventure with. We will be joining Joa Franco on his quest to discover the secret of Atlantis. So, let's get into it. So here, I'm going to show the different characters off a little bit here. Just a little bit, but I'm not really going to click on any of them, obviously. The son of Portugal's Duke Leon, the advent an adventurer who travels around the world to find the secrets of Atlantis. And here we go. Looking around for me, can't find me. Bet he's not entirely happy with me right now. <laughs> you must have a pretty high sneak skill. Head to the cafe. It's funny that in the Western release, they're all called cafes, but if you do the Eastern release over in Japan, China, and places like that, they are actually called taverns or bars. Just like they're on Earth Society here in the West, over there is actually called churches and such, which is kind of bizarre, but I mean, what else are you going to do, right? I think they thought over in the Western release it would be more offensive. So they cut out some of the historical elements, which is why we never got Uncharted Waters 3. It was too historically accurate. There was a possibility of a certain kind of trade that's not looked well upon in the world for obvious reasons. So it sucks that we never got it, but I can understand why we never got it here in the West. So let's go see my father. Hello, the butler. Marco the butler. If I had a butler, I don't think I'd want his name to be Marco. Nothing against the name or anything, but not my cup of tea. Has our fencing improved? At least we know our limitations. <laughs> I mean, Oh, book learning. Don't knock textbooks, kids. They're invaluable. Ah, the loot. Our hobby. <laughs> uh, the mother figure. So how's your guys' day going? Let me know in the comment section below. Hopefully uh, they're going really good. Um, I'm sorry this video got out so late. It was supposed to be done days ago, but due to technical errors, I'm having to redo the um, commentary over this. I just didn't get, didn't lock onto it, so I'm like you guys, I'm watching the video currently doing the commentary with this, so bear with me. I, I know that uh, I'm not the best at commentary. Hopefully, I'll improve as time goes by. It's still relatively new to me. So, I hope you guys are uh, willing to go through that journey with me and my commentary getting better. And then, like I said, the secret of Atlantis. He hopes that we find it in an urgent task. There is so much talking at the beginning of each storyline, sadly enough. 
I didn't want to skip it because a lot of this stuff is important to the overarching story, but it does get rather repetitive after a while. So I'm actually starting with the second game. Um, I haven't... I've played through and I've beaten the original Uncharted Waters, but I haven't done a recording of that yet. If this does well, and it's, if it's highly requested, I'll be more than happy to go back and do a playthrough of the original Uncharted Waters. We, the reason I picked Joa Franco is because Leon Franco is the main character of the first game, so I figure it's only right to start out as the main character, so son, going into this. So we stop by the cafe here. We're hoping to get, you know, say goodbye, maybe get some tips. Are we really leaving on a sea voyage? Yes, we are, Lucia. It is the Franco tradition, after all. <laughs> I mean, money is important. <laughs> uh, Lucia. Thousand gold pieces. Rocka, that was very rude of you. She wants to give this as a gift, but we just couldn't do that. It's actually our father's money, apparently. He wants to help us, but he's too prideful to come out and actually help us. So, he wants us to feel like we succeeded on our own. Our mother would help us? My mother would help us. Not our mother. My mother. Not yours. Sorry. <laughs> Slip of the tongue there, guys. Slip of the tongue. And there goes Lucia. Remember Lucia? She's super important to the story in the late game. Uh, middle and early game, not so much. This is the extent of how much she's important in the early to mid game. It won't be until much later that she becomes a lot more important. So we have to be there between 10 and 12 at night. You know, I've been playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts 3, and I have to say, my favorite segment so far has to be Pirates of the Caribbean, because I love sailing. Wooden ship sailing is like... I love it. I wish I could do more of it. So, games like this, where you get to sail the seas on a wooden vessel, always get me. Get to me. You, know, you have Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, um, you have that Sea of Thieves over on Xbox. You have the, uh, I know a lot of people are giving this game a lot of low reviews because they feel it's an ARC reskin, but I am I love the game Atlas. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but I'm definitely watching people play it like um, Demo and the EXP gamers over at Armco. You know, I'm enjoying watching their plays through it, which is getting me hyped. So if you like content like that, definitely visit those channels. They're definitely playing that game a lot. The Armco not so much, but Wasted Space and doing more of it. Definitely check that out if you love games like this. So I just picked up the rapier that my butler my butler, my friend, who is also my family's butler, um, got ready and prepared for me. <laughs> so this is when we find out this, the Round Earth Society is looking for me before I leave. So we head over to the Round Earth Society to see what they want. Now the Round Earth Society, in context to this game, really is just here to improve your luck you get a very tiny, min min minuscule amount of luck for studying. It's really not worth it unless you're willing to spend hours doing it. Or you can actually donate gold, which greatly increases your luck depending on how much you uh, donate at a time. Don't go like donating all your money because really you don't get much more benefit than donating 10,000 gold pieces at a time. So doing that repeatedly will greatly raise your luck, which is really important when you get to mid to late game, when you're trying to find certain items, and luck is a huge factor in that. Luck also will help prevent storms, and it will also help prevent 
many other things. So, we're meeting our new mate right here. He's going to join us, and he's going to be with us for the most of the game. So he wants us to take him to use Pagani. It... I know I didn't realize this when I was a kid until much later. It's essentially Japan. He wants us to take him to Japan. So... Unfortunately, because of the way the story narrative is, even if I make it to Japan early game, I do not actually get to stop in Japan. It's not until he comes to me mid to late game and says, Hey, we really should be getting to Japan. These people are waiting for me to teach them, and I'm, I need to get there to learn from them. So, it's definitely uh, something we have to do at some point. So, I know already in the back of my mind that our new mate is good at bookkeeping. So, I put Irinko as my bookkeeper, and because I noticed that I don't have a first mate yet, I switched it over to Rocco. The reason there's a little asterisk next to that is because it tells us that they have the appropriate skills to do that job effectively. So, I do make a slight, slight slip up here. I think, hey, why don't I go buy some goods to sell before I go see my mother to get the money. It was a goof up on my part. I go to buy the goods. I only have a thousand gold pieces. It was not my smartest decision in this playthrough. Definitely something I regretted. Don't make the same mistake I did if you go through to play this game. Always tell the merchant no to the first price. That's like rule number one if you're going to be doing trading in this game. You can always get it for cheaper. So we got 20 lots of it. I didn't want to spend all my money. Again, I kicked myself for this later because I was all like, why did I do this? Yes, treat me as a commoner. That's that's the that's the rule right now. Thank you. So we're gonna check in, and just like they said at the cafe, we're gonna sleep until ten. So we hop in bed, we nap until about ten, because there's nothing really I can do at this point story-wise until after I get a little bit more money. Money is so important in this game. If you don't have money to buy food and water, you're basically at a game over. So, ultimately, no matter what character you play as, unless you're like really good at pirating, you're going to be buying and selling and trading. Um, it's unavoidable for the most part if you need to have that money going forward. Most of these characters, you also want to build a multi-ship fleet i can think of one exception we'll uh, talk about him when we actually play as him but for the most part you want to have a multi ship fleet if you can help it it's, they're just so useful so very helpful in most most situations rocco was definitely in the first game he wasn't really an officer sailor but he was with you throughout the entire game so he never left your side. It was with you throughout the entire thing. So he knows Leon really well, and I think he's pretty excited to be going out on sea again, sea again, with his son. So Joa's mother is actually the princess of this country, but because there's already an heir to the throne, when she married Leon, she become a she became a duchess. And this is why Leon is now a duke. In the first one, you could work your way up to, to the t noble title just below duke. But the moment you take the title of duke after you beat the game, it's game over. Um, you've beat the game. In New Horizons, all the characters, if you so choose, can work their way up to being dukes or duchesses, depending. Oh, 
It looks like they're trying to push me out of the port already. Sorry about that. I have an alarm set for uh, some things. So this is another one of the mistakes. I, I made three, two small mistakes and one pretty big mistake in this playthrough. This is my second small mistake. For whatever reason, I had it in the back of my mind that the item shop opens at one o'clock in the morning. So the special, you know, the really rare stuff and such. It's not until two actually. So go back in here. I'm like, it should be two by the time I come out, and I get lucky. When you go into a building and when you come out, the game will randomly select anywhere between a half hour to two hours to go by. So, normally it's about an hour, hour and a half. So, I had it on my side. So, pro tip here when you go to sell the Aquamarine ti Tiara, always tell him no for the first price. I got lucky. On the first try, he's like, all right, I'll pay you extra. This is also where I realized I didn't have my rapier equipped. So, wanted to make sure I, I rectified this. So I put on the rapier, equipped it. So if I got into a duel, at least I'd have it. Now, if I get into a duel this early on in the game, especially without having any armor, a lot of it's going to be luck. The dueling system in this game was very luck-based. So, that was... Kind of sucks, but it's also still kind of fun to duel and uh, go into ship battles here. So this is why I bought the Rock Salt. It's because I knew this thing was coming up. And I know that I can buy the Rock Salt here in Lisbon and sell for a profit over in Seville. And buy the Porcelain per over in Seville and bring it back to Lisbon. And sell that for a profit. And I could do that three or four times with making money. And any more after that, I'm actually losing money. Gotta kind of keep your eye on the economy as you're going forward in this game. Thank you, Rico. This is what he tells us about our... The Lisbon-Seville trade route is one of the early game trade routes that really works well to get a little bit extra money. And the game's basically... You're playing... Most people who play this game, it's recommended that you start the game out playing as Joa. It explains the game in a better context as you're going along. So, I already know a couple of the good trade routes off the top of my head. I'm choosing, through through this playthrough, through most of it, I'm choosing to ignore the best trade route because I don't want us to have all this money at the beginning of the game. It takes away a lot of the difficulty and such. So, we set off on our first back and forth trip. And we head over to Lisbon. After you leave your first port, doesn't matter what port you land in again. The first time you enter into any building from this point forward, the game wants to explain how this building works. So, I already know how most of these buildings work. I really didn't need a refresher, but I went ahead and said okay each time anyways, simply so we would have the explanation of each building in the video itself. I did this more for your guys' benefit. I hope it works. If you didn't like it, let me know and I'll make sure to skip that out in the future. Still low, buy high. So, buy low, still high. Sorry, got that backwards. Dyslexia kicking in. See? Even he says, Say no to the first price, then a merchant gives you an option too. That's also a really good point. Unless you have more than one ship, do not fill your hold to the maximum capacity unless you know exactly where you're going and roughly how many days it's going to take to get there. Because you will screw yourself over.
So here we go. We sell the 20 lots of rock saddle I had. I could have bought so much more and made more of a profit. This was definitely on me. I screwed that up. So we tell him no to the price, obviously. We offer him 100. He tries to sell us for 111. We say no, you'll make a fine profit 106. So we get each lot of por por porcelain. I can't, I don't know why I can't say that. <clears throat> for 106. So I buy almost as much as I can buy at the time. I know that doesn't take a whole lot of time to travel between Seville and Lisbon. I'm going to do this two or three times, so I'm going to probably skip out part of the video where I spit it up. So we're not sitting here constantly just watching me going back and forth. So after he finishes explaining how the port works, then we'll, uh, we'll skip me out and we'll speed up the video for a bit. Find and hire some able bodied seamen at the cafe. That that sounded wrong. Next <laughs> supply of food and water. I, I, I that sounded so wrong. Gosh darn it. So he's telling us that we need extra officers to be able to have a larger fleet. Joa starts out with a good number of officers, really. So, much better than, say, Odo Bangs does. Or, um, even Catalina ends up with two, but she's a pirate. So here we go, we go to supply up. I'm like, I could probably get away with just buying 10. But I do 50. So. This gives me enough food and water to sail for up to 10 days. Okay, so from here, we're going to fast forward the video a little bit. All right, and I'm back. So as you can see, we are leaving Seville from here, and for whatever reason, I had it in my head, let's not go back to Lisbon. Let's head up north to London. I honestly thought that the porcelain would sell better at London. I was wrong. But anyways, here we run into Domingo. A nice stowaway that hops aboard our ship. I love how Joe is all like, I'm kind of flattered someone would want to stow away on my ship. You big lout. Who are you calling a lout? <laughs> oh, I can't. So as you can see, because it's Sunday, he calls himself Domingo. Takes courage to be a stowaway. <laughs> I like how Enrico is all like, everyone deserves this equal shot. Equal shot, sorry. Better be grateful, Lackey. <laughs> it's inconvenient that he doesn't have a last name. So we're gonna call him Domingo Mana. Mana? -na? I don't know. So anyways, continuing our voyage, heading north. And our little little passage. 
the northern seas here. We pull in here, and boom, we're in London. Our level went up, Enrico's level, and Enrico's level went up, and Domingo's level also goes up for navigation. So we head inside, and if memory serves, we head, we head straight for the merchant. So we head into the merchant, and keep in mind, I paid roughly 120 for the porcelain that I have. They're only offering 52. That is a huge loss. I cannot afford that kind of loss. So... I stay now, and we're going to keep sailing a little bit farther north, see what else we can find. I do, that's right, I do decide to stop by here, see what ships are available at this time, see if there isn't something worth coming back for at a later date. Unfortunately, I really don't see anything in the shipyard at this time that was worth my, was worth the luck. So it's interesting, on a side note, going back to the original Uncharted Water games. In Lisbon, in this one, the specialty good is Rock Salt. In the original Uncharted Water games, back when you're playing as Leon, the specialty is Raisins, which you do take up north to London. You can sell that for a pretty decent price. It's one of the better trade routes to utilize in the game, even going in the late game if you're looking just to make money for a bit. So, it is definitely worth doing that, which is one of the reasons why I originally came up to London, because in the back of my mind, I was like, this is a trade route back to the original game. I had forgotten that that's no longer the case in this game. So, I'm taking a look at a different couple of different ships, right? Now, I'm looking at a nail, and it would be nice to have one. Definitely a lot more cargo space than I currently have. But, uh... Honestly, I want a Karak. That's kind of what I'm aiming at at this point in the game. A Karak's a pretty decent sized ship. It definitely does good for trade. And at this point in the game, you need money. I need a lot more money to get farther in the game. So, we're going to supply up and we can sail for 10 days. Instead of heading back down to Lisbon, I, again, I decide to keep going a little bit farther north. Or do I? I th no. I could have sworn I decided to go back farther north. No, that's right. I stopped by France. I could start going down here towards France. And I discover, discover a couple of ports. So we found Nates. Nates. Again, I can't sell the porcelain here for basically anything. I'm going to lose money if I do. We go to the end, we sleep. Check in. We're gonna sleep until 8, 8 a.m. We're gonna go straight to the merchant's house. See what we can get for the rock salt that we have gotten. Nate's is honestly kind of a useless port in some regards. It doesn't really have a special, special it doesn't really have a specialty, and the port is really not worth investing in, simply because even when you invest in it, you're only gonna get basically a roughly basic port. There are two main ports in this game that I like to invest in the actual shipyard. <clears throat> One of them is Dublin. It's simply more convenient for me a lot of the times to make it to Dublin over going farther into past London. But the shipyard over by Holland, I forget its exact name. It's not Antwerp, but it's up in there. And if you invest in there, you can get the fully rigged ship after you get the industry up to a thousand. And you also want to get the... Uh, 
the economy up to a thousand also, simply so you can buy out the uh, more powerful figureheads, the card the Conrad Conrad cannons. I know I mispronounced that. I butchered that completely. So if you're going to invest in ports, definitely make that one of the ports you're going to do if you're doing industry, if you're looking to get a better ship. The fully rigged ship is the best ship in the game, hands down. Um, I personally prefer a frigate, simply because of how maneuverable it is, but if I'm looking at straight up tankiness and offensive power with crew complement, fully rigged ship wins hands down. I think the only ship that's more tanky is the ship you can get over in Japan if you're willing to sit there and invest in the ports over there. Because you can make your ships out of iron through that instead of just copper. And HP wise, it's, it's going to be superior. Um, so if you're looking to like do just cannon, fight, cannon fighting and looking just to outlast your opponents, that's definitely a ship to keep in mind. But the fully rigged ship is honestly just ha it has everything. So finally, we make our way back down here to Lisbon. Um, keep in mind the port we were just at. I think it was Beortrix or something like that. Um, the specialty there is raisins. In the next level, we are going to be using that port to make more money. We're going to go and buy rock salt from here in Lisbon, going up to that port, selling the rock salt for a profit, buying up the raisins, heading up to London, which still buys raisins for a pretty good price, buying wool from there, and coming back down to Lisbon. Um, I might do some of that off screen, but this is where I was all like, hey, let's end the video here, and then my phone was all like, hey, I'm getting low on energy, it's time to end the video, so.